Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy, holy name. For he has done great things. For he has done great things. Yes, he has done great things. And he has done great things. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. One more time. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy, holy name. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we give the Lord a good praise? Amen. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you'll endure just a little bit more of me, I got a few announcements. They're holy announcements. <laughs> we got, it says, if you or a family member is in need of, Chris, of a Christmas basket, please see Sister Kim immediately after church on Sunday. Baskets, the Christmas baskets will go to the public on Monday morning. Uh, I guess that's this week? Yeah, She's not so. here tonight. All right. Uh, and also, we need help filling Christmas stockings for our neighborhood Christmas stocking giveaway. We, are, we go through the neighborhood and we carol and things of that nature and we give away stockings with candy and toys to kids and last year it was a great success and it, we had we had really enjoyed it uh, so that'll be on Wednesday November 29th at 10 a.m. and they'll do that over in the chapel and uh, we are also in need of several items to fill our Christmas baskets uh, let's see uh, last Wednesday November 29th is the last day to turn in items for the Christmas baskets we've got lists out in the foyer uh, so you can pick that up uh, of li things that we need uh, in the foyer uh, on the bulletin board. All right. And uh, we only have five tickets remaining for our annual uh, church Christmas dinner. They're $20 a piece. And please see Sister Rosie or Kim. Amen. All right. And uh, the Christmas caroling stocking giveaway will be December the 2nd from 2 to 5 p.m. They'll have donuts and hot chocolate and coffee. And uh, will be served before and after we return. Uh, it says, Pre please bring a lawn chair and a blanket because it's probably going to be cold. Uh, for those who can't walk, they can sit in the trailer that, that gets pulled along or in the van. Amen. Holy Ghost Amen. Anointments. Anointments. Announcements are all, all right. done. Plus, we have our Christmas Eve candlelight service yeah. coming up. That's from 6 to 7. And then we'll have a New Year's Eve service from 6 to 7 the following week. Amen. Well, let's give Pastor Denny and the Lord a good hand tonight. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And tomorrow, of course, being Thanksgiving, uh, the church office will be closed. Hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving day. Praise God. I hope you've got your Bibles with you tonight. Now, for the last few weeks, we've been in the book of James. But tonight we're going to go to the one chapter epistle of Jude. Jude. And we're going to take a look at this. And this, I remember checking this out once, and this was roughly around 66 A.D. Now keep this thought in mind. 66. So the church had been going now for a, several years, a few years. Started just a, just a few days after Jesus ascended back to heaven on the day of Pentecost. And so this is probably another at least 30-some years on past that. And uh, Jude gets a little tough in this because he's wanting people to live right, walk right, walk uprightly before the Lord. And so it, uh, let me look at the first verse. It says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Now, I've explained a lot of this in, in the book of James. James and Jude were brothers and they were the sons of Joseph and Mary. 
Back in Matthew, I'm just going to kind of go through that a little. I don't know if I can quote it exactly, but the Bible said the birth of Jesus was on this wise. It was like this. This is the way it happened. She was a spouse to Joseph to be married, and all of a sudden she's pregnant. And he's not sure what's going on here, and he's a just man. He's not going to make a public example of her. And so uh, he, he was going to put her away privately, not make a big thing of it, because he didn't know what was going on. But in a dream, the angel of the Lord spoke to him and told him exactly what was happening. He said, this child is by the Holy Spirit. He is the Son of God. His name is Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. And the Bible said that Joseph knew her not until after Jesus was born, and then they came together as husband and wife, and James and Jude were born to them. All right. Now, with that thought in mind, now without going to the Scripture, the Apostle Paul had been traveling around for about three years or so in different places, and he finally came back to Jerusalem, and he spent 15 days with the Apostle Peter. And he said, I didn't see any of the other apostles except James, the brother of our Lord. Last week I was, I was, I got to thinking about this. Can you imagine what it must have been like for James and Jude, younger than Jesus, to grow up with him and observe him and watch him in his life? And the Bible said he knew no sin, not even guile was found in his mouth. Wow. And as they were waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, he said there was about 120 of them there, and with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brethren, which would be James and Jude. All right, with those thoughts in mind now. Verse 2 said, Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence, now, now I want you to keep in mind, he's going to get a little tough in here, in this just one chapter, going to get a little tough. And if things were getting to the place where he had to get tough in 66 A.D., think what it's like today. They kept talking about the, the last days, and we're in the last of the last days now, so keep that thought in mind. When I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints." For there are certain men crept in un unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. If that was true then, think what it's like today, in this day. Wow. I'll be honest with you. Now, I've been a Christian for 67 years. I've seen a lot of wonderful things the Lord has done. But I'll be honest with you, these last three or four years, is, uh, it blows my mind almost. I, I, killings like I've never heard of before and, and other types of stuff going on. Well, let's go on a little further here. Crept in unawares, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. In other words, you used to know this. Now, get it back in your heart and your mind and live by it. Though you once knew this. How that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. He's emphasizing faith. Faith is an absolute must in our lives. And the angels which kept not their first estate, without going into a long discourse on that, we know that Lucifer, who is the devil, led a band of angels, and they rebelled against God, were cast out of heaven, and that's what they're, they're going about doing, what they can do right now. 
kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner. Give, now, now I want you to get this. I want you to get this. I'm not going to make a big thing of it, but I want you to get it. Giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. Huh. Wow. Are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Wow. Now, giving themselves over to fornication and so on. Hold on to Jude here, but I want you to go back to the book of Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. And let's go down and, oh, let's start about verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, talking about spiritual uncleanness, and probably some natural uncleanness, through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Men with men, women with women. Wow. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. Not normal. Vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use we're talking about sexually now, into that which is against nature. Wow. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly. Not right. And receiving in themselves that Recompense of their error, which was meat. Now, I want you to go way back to the book of, hold on to Jude now. Let's go way back to the book of Leviticus. Way back in the beginning. Book of Leviticus, chapter 20. And let's go down and look at, let's see. Well, let's, uh, hmm. Let's just look at verse 23. If a man also lie with mankind, men with men, as he lieth with a woman as he normally would, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Wow. That's, so it, things was getting a little tough back then. And Jude is making sure that these believers here walk uprightly before the Lord. Matando koma kastanima. Wow. Wow. All right. Verse 9 here said, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring it, Against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. See, both, even the devil had been an angel, and of course, Michael, archangel, and Michael was very careful. He didn't say, I rebuke you, he said, The Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts. In those things, they corrupt themselves. Wow. <clears throat> if this fits our day, probably the, the, this one chapter of Jude here probably fits as much as I've read throughout the New Testament here. 
Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Cory. These are spots in your feasts of charity, your feasts of love. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about with winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. <clears throat> These were people that were trying to interject and get in with people like us and wanting to rub off on us and get us into stuff that wasn't right. Wow. Verse 13, raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Whew. Wow. And I believe that day is getting very, very, very close to us now. Notice he didn't say 10,000. He said 10,000s. Wow, what a number. What a number is going to be there. <laughs> Glory to God. I've got a mom and a dad and a father-in-law and a mother-in-law and a brother and sister-in-law and two sisters, my wife, my daughter in heaven. And they're going to come with them. Glory to God. They're going to be a part of that ten thousands of his saints. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers complainers walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaketh great swelling words having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Wow. I think the point is stay away from stuff like that. Now if you can win somebody to the Lord, fine, but if, if you find that, that somebody is, is just look like they're given over then you, you hold them up in prayer, but don't have any fellowship with them. Don't have any fellowship with them. Absolutely. Verse 17, But beloved, remember you the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly life in the last times. Now, if he's calling that the last times, Think where we're at right now. We are in the last of the last times. Wow. Walking after their own ungodly lusts, these be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, having not the Holy Spirit, but you, beloved, you, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now hold on to this and go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Hallelujah. Let's go down to about verse 13. Wherefore let him, and that means him and her, him or her. Wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue, that means an un, unknown to the speaker, a language that normally you don't speak in. Pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, an unknown language, my spirit, the real me on the inside is doing the praying. But my understanding, my mind 
is unfruitful. Now, there can be times the Lord may let you know what the Holy Spirit's praying for, but many times you, you just know He's doing the praying. And thank God when He does, it, it, it happens. It gets it done. If I pray in an unknown, unknown language, my spirit inside of me, not from my mind, out of my spirit is doing the praying, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? What am I going to do then? I will pray with the Spirit, with my Spirit inside. I will pray. See, I will pray with the Spirit, with my Spirit. Let me put it that way. And I will pray with the understanding, with my mind also, both ways. Very often you hear Pastor John saying, pray in the Spirit. That means pray in an unknown language by the Holy Spirit. He knows exactly what's, what he's praying about. I will pray with my spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. Now get this. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. There's times, now most of the time we sing with our mental understanding, but there's times when we get in the spirit, we just begin to sing in, in another language. Whew. Glory, and you talk about worshiping God. Wow, glory, 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 glory. Wow. Now, verse 21 here in Jude said, Keep yourselves in the love of God. I want to turn to a scripture here. Hold on just a moment now. Ephesians 6 18. I want to turn over there for a moment. Ephesians 6 18. Ah, yes. Verse 18 said, Praying always with all, I've underlined the word all, all prayer. Now you don't just get down every time you pray and boom, 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 boom. You, there's different types of prayer. Obviously praying things that you know that you need to pray for. Other times praying in the Spirit in another language. You know, talking about that, in case there should be someone here that might not fully comprehend what I'm talking about. A few years ago, a brother was here that he and his friend had been studying the French language and they could understand it pretty well, could carry on a conversation in French. And said an older gentleman stood up and began to speak and we could tell immediately he's speaking in French. They could tell pretty much what was being said when I gave the interpretation, it was a two-part message he said, right down the line, what was being said in the French language by the Holy Spirit. Whew, glory be to God forever. Wow. Whew, my. <laughs> Amen. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints looking for opportunities to pray in the Spirit. All right, back over here in Jude now. Whew, glory be to God. Now, when we finish this chapter, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to look at something else for a few minutes with you as we finish up. We'll, we'll close about five till here in a moment, just a little bit. All right. Keep yourselves in the love of God, verse 21, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and that's the Lord. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. One day, and I don't believe it's going to be that long, we're going to stand before the Lord. Wow. Whew. What a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, what a day, what a day that's going to be. Glory be to God. And verse 25 said, to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. 
Now, roughly in the year A.D. 66, Jude, the brother of James, and they were brothers of Jesus, had different fathers, of course. Jesus' father was Almighty God in heaven, and Joseph was their father. But he's getting real straight with the believers here because the enemy's trying to pull them out and get them believing all kind of goofy stuff. And the enemy's trying to do that today. This is why we need to thank God for our, when I pray during this hour of prayer, I pray for our church. I pray for every man, woman, boy, and girl that's part of this church. I pray for God's blessing to be on each one, and that includes you that are watching. And I pray that our hearts will be ready to receive the blessing of God. Hallelujah. And then I pray, Lord, I said, you know every church that belongs to you, those who love you, those who know you as their Savior. And I pray for each of them that you'll bless them. And I pray for all of them. Pray for all of them. Praise God. And God wants you and I to walk uprightly before Him, to walk humbly before Him. I pray every day, every day, Lord, help me to walk uprightly before you today. Help me to truly, honestly, don't do, I don't mean to humble myself before people. Humble myself before you, Lord, before you, and walk uprightly before you. Praise God forever. Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> whew, glory. Take your Bibles now. Uh, we're just going to look at a few scriptures here. What is tomorrow? Thanksgiving holiday. Well, Let's look at some scriptures along that line. Let's go to second, let me see here. Let me see something here. Hold on just a minute. Let me see here. Let's go back to second Corinthians. You'll probably get there before me. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And let's look at verse 16. I think I've got it right. Hmm. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, let's back up to verse 14. I use this scripture quite a bit. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace, I like to emphasize that, the abundant grace, the grace of God, might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. The thanksgiving of many. We don't need to wait till the holiday of thanksgiving. I go around thanking God probably every day. I don't think I miss a day. But saying, Lord, I am so thankful. I thank you for touching my life, for saving me. Today I, I was saying, Lord, I am what I am by the grace of God because you touched my life back there when I was 15 years old. And I've not been the same since. You live in my life. I live my life for you. And I am what I am by the grace of God. Wow. Now, here in that same book, 2 Corinthians, flip on over to chapter 9. And, oh, let's... Let's start with verse 6. And this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Wow. Mm. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Wow. Every man, and that means man and woman, every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, He hath dispersed 
abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for their food, and multiply their seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, in other words, being full, which causeth us, through us, thanksgiving to God. Thanksgiving, now we thank God for our food, but it's not just having a big meal, which I like myself. We need to go around thanking God every day for touching our life. Thanking God for His mercy, His love, His grace. Hallelujah. Causes through us thanksgiving to God. Flip over to Philippians now if you would. Philippians chapter 4. And let's go down to about verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. And when you do that, the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Jesus. Let me read the next verse. Finally, brethren, finally, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, and that means right, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, and if there's any praise, think on these things. Wow, glory be to God. The very next book, Colossians, go to chapter 2 in Colossians. Wow, glory be to God. Colossians chapter 2. And let's see, let's, let's look at verse 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. We are in Him. Rooted and built up in Him. We are rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. I'm emphasizing thanksgiving. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Giving. Now flip on in the same book of Colossians to chapter 4. Let's just start in verse 1 for a moment. Masters, we could say bosses, give unto your servants that which is just, that which is right and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven, a boss in heaven. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Wow. Continue in prayer and watch in the same in prayer with thanksgiving. Whenever you're praying, thank God. Just go around thanking God all the time. With all praying also for us that God would open unto us doors of utterance. That's what Luke, uh, Jude was doing. He had a door of utterance to speak to them. To speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom according to them that are without, redeeming the time. All right. Let's go to First Timothy now. First Timothy. And let's go to chapter four. 
And let's just start reading in the first verse of chapter 4 of 1 Timothy. Now the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, speaketh expressly, very plainly, that in the latter times, they keep talking about the latter times, wow. And we are in the latter of the latter times. Some shall depart from the faith. And I'm looking around and don't any of you even think about something like that or I'll get all over you. Don't do it. Some shall depart from the faith giving heed, listening to seducing spirits and doctrines, we could say teachings of devils or demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving. Receive your food with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Wow. Wow. Now over here in Jude, the very next book is Revelation. And I'm going to begin to close here now. Go to Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. And let's go down. Oh, let's see where to start. Let's, let's start with about verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number. Remember the tens of thousands? Of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. In other words, palms that you would wave. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell, the angels now fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Man, hallelujah, Woo! glory to God. Have you got anything at all out of this tonight? Whew. Woo, glory to God, amen, amen. Stand with me if you would. My, 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 my. Well, I pray that everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving day tomorrow. We encourage you to be back here on Sunday. Thank God, I believe we're going to have a great Sunday in the Lord. God's going to bless. Remember those announcements now. A lot, of, a lot of stuff going on. It's a busy time going into December. Very busy time. And so we want to do everything we can for the Lord and follow what God's Word has told us. Praise God. Now, Father, we love you and praise you with all of our heart, Lord. I pray as we leave here to go to our homes that our sleep will be sweet tonight. May the hand of God be upon us in a wonderful way. And Lord, may the rest of this week be filled with blessing and victory. And I pray that Sunday will be a day to remember in the Lord. Grant it, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Give the Lord another clap offering. Praise God. Bless you now. Fellowship together. And we'll look for you in church.